Hello and welcome. I'm Dan Bevels with Floyd Medical Center and we are glad you joined us today as we begin a conversation on heart health. And I'm happy to be joined today by Dr. Jackie Terry, a Floyd primary care physician and also Robin Cater, a clinical educator at Floyd. Thank you both for joining us today. Okay. We're talking about heart health and it is uh, such a, a critical topic. I mean, I, I guess that's somewhat of a pun. I don't mean for it to be, but it really is a serious topic because it's, it's one of the, the number one killers in, uh, in America, it's particularly for women. Uh, so it's a really important topic. Topic. And today we want to talk a little bit about uh, risk factors and signs and symptoms and, and things that women in particular can do to, uh, to prevent heart disease. So, so Dr. Terry, let's, let's begin with that. What, what are some of those primary uh, symptoms that, that may lead, a, a, particularly a woman, to, to realize that she's having a heart problem? Well, unfortunately, um, women tend not to, to ignore the signs of a heart attack because it doesn't present the same way as men. Typically, you see um, the picture of the gentleman clutched over, holding his chest, feeling short of breath. Um, and that's what people think of when they think of a heart attack. And sometimes in women, it is a lot more vague symptoms, maybe some nausea, upset stomach that won't go away, um, feeling more short of breath than usual, pain that can radiate up the neck, down the left arm, or even some um, back pain. So sometimes it's not as simple as just, you know, chest clutching, chest pain, and you know automatically that um, it is a heart attack. And, and what that means is that sometimes as women, we ignore it and say, oh, it's just a stomach bug. I'll wait till tomorrow. And then, you know, lo and behold, they're actually having a heart attack. So Robin, um, what, are, what are the risks of, of just putting that off and kind of dismissing those symptoms? Well, the risks are huge because time is muscle and uh, there's treat, life-saving treatment that can be done if the symptoms are caught early enough and the, the cardiac event, the heart attack is prevented. So coming into the emergency room and getting that going uh, is the difference between a, a, preventing the heart attack, or B, even if you're having a heart attack, uh, preserving heart muscle mm -hmm. by having stent intervention um, to have a healthier lifestyle afterwards too. So before we even get to those those signs and symptoms, there are some risk factors that are associated. Mm -hmm. What are some of those, Dr. Terry? Age, male versus female, obviously. Um, hypertension, history of hypertension, elevated cholesterol, whether or not you smoke, whether or not you're a diabetic, um, and whether or not any of those things are controlled. Other things that um, are things that we as clinicians think of as increased risk are, you know, whether or not you're on hormones or not on hormones. Um, whether or not you've had a prior MI or any kind of other thromboembolic event, because plaque and, st plaque and um, arterial disease does not discriminate. So if you know you've had a stroke, nine times out of 10, you've probably had some type of heart disease as well. So things like that are things that we can tend to use to um, categorize somebody's risk. So, so Robin, what, what are some of those things that particularly the ones that we can control, what can we do to, to help alleviate those risk factors? Well, just knowing them. Mm -hmm. um, there's really <coughs> nothing you can do about your sex. There's nothing you can do about your age. I'm finding that out. <laughs> uh, and there's really nothing you can do about your family history. But the rest of those, everything she said, um, you can actually control. You can't prevent being a type 1 diabetic, but you can um, by diet and exercise ward off type 2 diabetes and even if you are diabetic you can take your care of yourself and keep your blood sugars under control mm -hmm. um, obesity we live we were just talking earlier we live in the cardiovascular disease area mm -hmm. of the united states we love fried chicken and all those <laughs> things but and and that's okay in moderation you don't have to totally not do that but you just have to be practice moderation um, cholesterol knowing your numbers mm -hmm. we have all sorts of events and and um, screenings that you can know your know your numbers, know your cholesterol. I've seen very healthy appearing people who have hyperlipidemia mm -hmm. just because of family history. Mm -hmm. And so knowing the cholesterol and, uh, and and getting a grip on that, you know, with your diet and if if not diet medication, if you need medication, blood pressure. You know, for years we've called it the silent killer. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a reason for that because it does so much end organ damage and we see that mm -hmm. um, with, with cardiac patients. And of course, you know, smoking, I mean, it's just stop, yeah, just stop. And did I cover them all? I think you did. <laughs> okay. yeah, I think you did. And when we talk about things about 
like, such as smoking. We have programs at Floyd mm -hmm. to help you uh, uh, quit smoking. Can you talk about some of those things that we offer? Well, we offer smoking cessation programs. First of all, when you go to any, any of the primary care offices or even in hospital, they ask you, do you smoke? And how much do you smoke? Mm -hmm. And are you ready to quit? If you express interest in wanting to quit, there's a lot of different uh, programs and voucher programs that are available to help you get some of the smoking cessation aids, whether that be medications, patches, lozenges, those kind of things. And also, um, there is a tobacco quit line that you can call that helps coach you through that process so that if you have any questions or you're concerned about some of the side effects or you know what to expect once I do stop smoking, there's resources available to you at all times. One of the things that I, I hear in, in all of what you're saying, both of you, is that um, you, know, you talk about knowing your number and, and high blood pressure and things like that. For just the average person out there to detect that, they need to make those regular trips mm -hmm. to the to mm -hmm. the doctor, right? So, mm -hmm. it, you know, at least uh, an annual checkup. Absolutely, absolutely. Usually, you know, if if somebody does not have a primary care doctor, if they come in for a new patient evaluation, those are all things that we would discuss and, and look for. Um, we recommend, especially once you get above the age of forty, that you do get uh, blood screening, blood work at least mm -hmm. once a year to look at your numbers, like she mm -hmm. talked about, for your cholesterol, kidney liver function and things of that nature. That way, if you do have an unknown, you know, familial disease that is that causes you to have higher cholesterol values than normal, you catch it early so that you can start um, the dietary changes, the lifestyle changes, and if necessary, medication as soon as possible. And also with blood pressure issues, you know, if you catch it early, there's it's a lot easier to um, get control and manage those things the younger you are and the less resistance in your arteries, it's a lot more easier, it's a lot easier for the medications to work. So um, absolutely, at least at minimum, a yearly physical just to get those things checked out. So you're, you're never too young to, to begin Never that. too young, no. Okay. So, um, and, and just kind of wrapping things up, what are some really basic things that women in particular can do to take care of their heart? I think, um, to do the things we talked about, to uh, to um, exercise, mm -hmm. to have a healthy healthy diet, moderation, exercise, um, and and that's a lot. That's a a lifestyle moderation too. Women tend to think that we have to do everything and we have to do it in the next five seconds. So to take time to uh, take care of yourself, mm -hmm. whether that's spiritual time, quiet time, solitude. Um, however that looks mm -hmm. to kind of de-stress and mm -hmm. then you know we're such caregivers we're born to be caregivers and so um, to understand that you, you need to, to look at yourself and and to um, make those appointments to to actually and not ignore the symptoms yes. because you have to take <clears throat> care of everybody else or mm -hmm. it can't be having me no, don't ignore the sy symptoms and when you talk about diet and exercise we're not talking about Dr. Terry, going to the gym for two hours no. a day or what? No. It's really simple. Yes, 30 to, 30 to 60 minutes of cardio activity dramatically decreases mm -hmm. your risk of heart attack. Um, so just, you know, even if you can't commit to running a marathon, that's, that's reasonable. All you have to do is just walk and get your heart rate up for 30 minutes a day, and that alone will help decrease your risk of a heart attack. Any diet things in particular to watch so, out for? So typically we recommend that patients follow what we call a Mediterranean style diet. Mediterranean style diet is a diet that is high in lean protein, so like chicken, fish, um, turkey, things like that, vegetables, fruit, and uh, lower in red meats and um, fatty foods. You just want to limit those things. In general, if you just take the approach that you want to uh, make half of your plate vegetables and then some type of a fourth of it be some type of lean protein in general you're doing what we would recommend um, everybody has their vice everybody you know has a few things that they like to indulge Excellent. in every now and then and in like she said in moderation it's fine mm -hmm. it's not going to kill you but <laughs> in general just a, a low fat low mm -hmm. cholesterol diet is what we recommend before we go we, we've talked a lot about women and their their heart health, but the, these tips apply to men also. Absolutely, right? yes, so, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and, and, but you did say the symptoms present themselves differently. Mm -hmm. how, how might uh, 
present differently in a, in a male? So men do tend to have more um, classical symptoms, like I said, the, the chest clutching pain, feeling short of breath, feeling you know doubled over, pain radiating to the neck and down the left arm. Um, and then they also have an added benefit of usually there's a woman telling them, oh, you're having chest pain, go to the ER. Um, but there, that's typically the, the classical presentation and men tend to get to the ER faster than women do when they're, present, when they're having um, heart attack symptoms. Okay. Well, very good. Well, thank you both for, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Great tips. And we're just, uh, we, want, we want folks to live healthy. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us. And make sure you check out heart.floyd.org because all of the information that Dr. Terry and Robin have talked about is right there. We've got information about Know Your Numbers, what exactly that means, and how you get to know those numbers, and also a great risk assessment that will help you determine if some of these, these things that we're talking about are appearing in your own life. So go to heart.floyd.org and by all means, see your family physician. And if you don't have one, uh, there's information about our doctors right there as well uh, and also on floyd.org. So if you need a family physician, you can find one that matches uh, just, just those things that, uh, that you're looking for in a physician at floyd.org. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll talk to you again soon.